sisters and friends in the Lord, we thank God for this opportunity to be gathered once again as a community of faith on this third Sunday of Lent. We are already in the middle of our Lenten journey so that we could walk with Jesus to Jerusalem in fulfillment of his mission. And we thank our brothers and sisters who are with us during this Mass through live streaming. We remember all of your petitions in our daily prayers and our daily Masses. At kung nasaan po kayo, mga kapatid na kapwa Pilipino, uh, sana po ay ituloy natin ang ating paglalakbay itong kwaresma para makasama, masamahan natin si Jesus sa Jerusalem sa pagtupad ng kanyang misyon. Our gospel for this Sunday is a call again to repentance. This is not the first time that Jesus uh, reminded his, uh, not only his disciples, but the people of the need to repent. According to St. Mark, Jesus opened his public ministry with a call to repentance. Repent. The parable given by Jesus in the Gospel gives us some good motivation to repent. We have the owner of the orchard or the vineyard. Please do not think of him as an evil person. In contrast to the, uh, the uh, what is this? The gardener. Well, sometimes we say, oh, the gardener is very kind. No, Give the tree, the fig tree, another chance. Uh, but the owner of, of, uh, of the orchard must also get his credit. No. Uh, this is an orchard or maybe a vineyard where he planted uh, trees or uh, grapes for profit, to earn. And the goodness of this, of this man was he allowed a poor fig tree to occupy space in his orchard. A fig tree is normally planted along the footpath. Pang, ano yan eh, pang bangke bangketa. For a fig tree to be uh, planted in an orchard or vineyard is a great honor to the fig tree. So this owner is, uh, is very kind. No? Uh, this owner lifted a humble fig tree to the level of the other uh, uh, trees that were productive. And, uh, and so it was uh, just normal for him to expect some fruit because it is now planted on good soil, not just on flimsy, dirty areas. I took care of you. You have been given the best. You are on good soil. Now, this is, a, uh, this is a motivation for repentance, not just fear. We should be alert, not only to the fearful elements. Oh, I might die. Oh, uh, this might be my last uh, lunch, so I better eat oh, well. Oh, this might be my last encounter with him, so I better smile. All alertness to fearful signs. But are we alert also to the goodness? The goodness of God. And this is a this is a more potent motivation for conversion. When we remember how well we have been treated, how 
we were loved even we, when we do not deserve that love. When we remember that, the heart melts and we turn again to the one who has done us good. Ang pagbabalik loob po ay hindi lamang nakabatay sa kinatatakutan. Ang pagbabalik loob po sana ay mangyari kapag nakaalaala natin ang kabutihan ng Diyos sa atin. Katulad nitong puno ng igos na minahal, nilagay pa siya doon sa tunay, kasa sa mabuting lupa. At sana maalaala ng punong igos, no? may special treatment ako, kaya uh, magbigay naman ako ng bunga dito sa nagmamayari ng lupa. So repentance, you know, that's why in, in the tradition of the church, we have perfect contrition and imperfect contrition. There is contrition that is motivated by fear because I fear the loss of heaven and the pains of hell. That's also good. But then you say, but most of all, because I offended you, my God, who art all good and deserving of all my love. That's perfect contrition. That's perfect ground for repentance. And then you have the gardener, no? Who said, okay, let us give it uh, another chance, another sign of goodness. But we don't know what happened. What's the ending of the parable? Will the fig tree bear fruit? Or was it cut down? The fig tree is each one of us. So please continue the story. With alertness to conversion, repentance, by first remembering how good God has been to us. The invitation of St. Paul to the Corinthians, remember what God has done to our ancestors. But what did our ancestors do? So be alert. Don't waste the love, the love that is given to us. And the second motivation for repentance is, uh, normally we think of repentance as just avoiding evil actions or turning from evil deeds to good deeds. That's good also. But let us not forget Jesus' call to repentance. He says, repent and believe in the good news. On Ash Wednesday, that's what we said. No? Repent and believe in the good news. So it's a repentance turning to faith. Faith. And when we talk about uh, conversion in the Bible, uh, it, is, it means a change of thinking. No? A change of, a change of uh, the way I see reality, the way I view things, metanoia, change of thinking. No? And this change of thinking is brought about by faith. When there is faith, we change our vision, we, we, we change our way of looking at reality and persons. Moses, in the first reading, gives us an important cue here. He saw a burning bush. He approached, he was alert, he saw this burning bush, which caught his uh, curiosity. He approached it. And there, a conversation with God started. A conversation, a revelation of who God is, leading to His mission. God reveals His compassion for the poor. God reveals His commitment to the suffering. Moses slowly was led to faith, and his life changed. Repentance 
towards a change. It's a change of viewing things by faith. You know, come to think of it, every bush is a burning bush. There is no ordinary bush. Every bush is burning. Every bush speaks of God's presence. But do we see them burning? Every bush burns, but only those with the eyes of faith see the bush burning. Every ground is holy ground, but only people of faith see that every ground that they are stepping on is holy ground. Every person is the image of God. Every person is the presence of Jesus, even enemies, but only a person of faith sees a brother, a sister, a neighbor in every person. Repent! And thanks to the gift of faith, we are enabled by God to have a different vision to have a, a new way of thinking, a new way of uh, seeing persons and reality. So let us be alert. No bush, no blade of grass, no tree is simply a tree. They're all burning. And God can speak to us. Ah. So if after the Mass, some of you will go to breakfast or lunch or what, there is no such thing as ordinary bread. There is no such thing as ordinary uh, water. There is no such thing as ordinary rice. Every grain of rice is burning grain. But only those with the eyes of faith will see that. They say, wow. But without faith, they say, huh? Tutong na naman. Kanin na naman. Repent and pray for faith. O tama na. I want to end this uh, with a, a sharing. Uh, we, when we started a few years ago, I think more than five years ago now, the uh, San Lakbay a program to help those who are addicted to drugs you know, in the parishes, in the Archdiocese of Manila, involving the community for their rebirth and rehabilitation. You know, there was one of them who has squandered his family's uh, uh, property just to support his, his vice. But when his parents who were living abroad, who were living in another country, learned about it. The mother came back to the Philippines, mm -hmm. resigned from her work and went back to the Philippines. And she saw the misery, their property gone, and her son really emaciated. The son became homeless. The son was sleeping there on the sidewalk. What did the mother do? The mother would always follow where the son was. The mother even slept on the sidewalk just to assure the son, I am here, I am here. And that man is now one of the facilitators of the program guiding other drug addicts towards rehabilitation. When I had a conversation with him, he said, it was not medicine. The medicine helped, counseling helped, 
but the love of my mother was the greatest force. How could I waste that love? That love is precious. I have to change in response to that love. Repentance because of love. And the mother, when I interviewed her, I asked her, were you not uh, irritated, angry? I said, but I saw a son in that poor, poor boy. Vision. You don't see a criminal. You see a son. Repentance. This is the call of Jesus. Let us heed his call.